HMS for SYC VIL. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so let me start with some context, just because this is a uh, uh, slightly diverse audience. Um, so let me let's consider the space C2. I won't say mirror symmetry for this, but not quite. I'm going to give it coordinates um, x0 and x1, and I want to remove from it the locus where x0, x1 equals 1. <coughs> okay. So this is known to be self-mirror. Um, and um, you know, one way to think about mirror symmetry for it is to take inside of it two C star squared charts given by x zero not equal to zero, x zero and then x zero um, x one give you coordinates, and x one not equal to zero. And these C star square C star square charts are well mirror to other, you know. Each of these is mirror to again C star squared. And then you figure out basically how they're glued together. Figure out the glue. But when I said that it's covered by two C star square charts, I actually lied because there's one point missing. One point missing, which is the origin. And so in, the, you know, in some of the treatments, like for example in this paper with Ludmill and Denis, what, Denis, what we did is basically say, well, you know, we start something much more complicated than this, but we say, well, we have these two stars, blah, blah, blah. Then we just analytically continue the gluing, and then we get our mirror. But, uh, but if you want to do things more precisely, you actually have to understand what corresponds to this origin. So what corresponds to this origin on the symplectic side the way to think about this construction is to start with C2 and map it via x0, x1 to C and the picture will look like this except now I'm going to remove So there's a critical value at zero, and then there is um, a puncture there. And what corresponds to that origin that is missing is some kind of object that projects to a circle that goes through the singularity. And what I mean by some kind of object is I want to remind you that the fiber of this map is generically is a cylinder. And so if you take this cylinder, and you move it around this curve, you get an inverse S2. Okay. So if you actually want to think about the mirror, what you do is you think about this immersed S2, you think about some immersed Lagrangians, and then you glue things together. So the problem is gluing things together is delicate because this is like one point, the way I explained it, and then the other two are C star squared. You don't really want to glue the mirror from one point and two open charts. So the right thing to do is to actually think about all the possible think about all the um, objects of the Fukai category, which are supported on this Gronje. So, excuse me, the cross was, the, the cross was what? The yeah. cross is the origin. And this is the point one, <coughs> which I removed. And so what you say to what's going on when you go around? Well, here, this is the immersion point. This is the point where the, I said this is an immersed S2, because the cross is where there's a vanishing cycle. The fiber over the cross is this. So this circle collapses to one point. So as you come in here, it collapses to one point. I come in, so it meets itself, and it locally, I mean, locally, I mean, this S2 looks like this. I mean that this circles, they will wrap a, 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 a that's what you mean? Yeah. yeah, the circle, 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 collapse to a point, collapse to the same point, give you two minutes. Yeah, sure, but, but this is just a regular neighborhood of this. Yeah. That's, that's right. right. That's right. So, um, that's how you should. So, so, in fact, you know, people have thought about the space of 
uh, object supported on this S2. So that's what that's why I told to be S2 give me one minute. So I call uh, who else? Who is with you? Okay. And Tonkin. Uh, so in fact, what they did is that they thought carefully about what is the space of all objects supported on this one, on, the, on this universal Lagrangian. And the, the outcome of it is that if you think about it carefully enough, you actually don't even have to think about the torus charts. Okay? The, object, the space of objects supported in this S2 is in fact all of C2 minus X0, X1. So this knows, this detects all objects of the Fukai category. So the space of objects on S2 is equal to the mirror space. Good. So, so this objects on S2 means like it is a Kaho choice sense? A little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And a little bit more. Uh, let me, no, I'll be precise. I'll be precise about what I need. But for them, they need more. I mean, you really mean like the moduli of sheaves on the mirror space, right? Yeah, you know, the rank one. Yeah, okay. So in fact, you know, this, in their case, the rank one object corresponds to the skyscraper sheaves of points. OK, so what is the purpose of this talk? So the purpose of this talk is to try to analyze an example, so to think of this as the first, maybe second, class of class of an infinite family. So let x and then the the space given by the equation product i equals zero to m of xi equals one plus the sum as j goes from one to n of yj, which I think of as being contained in C M plus one. I will, to make notation clear, it's easier if I just put an x here. These are the x guys cross c star to the n, and here these are the y's. Okay? And I'll, I'll say many things about this, but for now I just want to say the theorem, uh, this is in, in preparation. Uh, it will be joined with Zach depending on what proof we end, I end up using. <laughs> So because that, that's the proof I want to explain now. But I won't spend much time on this. Then I'll talk about the part I care the most about, which is basically that homological mirror symmetry holds for this, which means that the Fukai category, the wrapped Fukai category, let me just wrap Fukai category to so more precise. <coughs> the wrapped Fukai category of X and N is equivalent to the derived category of covariant sheaves of X and N. Okay? So before going further, I should say why I care about this specific class of examples, okay? So the, this, these spaces, these and their covers and quotients, and products, and quotients and products, give uh, the local models for the singularities of gross Sieverts. Uh, let's call them toric degenerations. Toric, uh, toric. So let's call them SYZ vibrations toric degenerations. Okay. So, 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 sorry. Uh, as far as I understood, having an actual picture like this only happened in three dimensions or something. <laughs> uh, is it now understood in all dimensions? No, so they, they have no they have a picture which is for all dimensions. They have the notion of toric degenerations all dimensions and a construction of you know from a toric degeneration to a tropical tropical data and from that tropical data some reconstruction theorem. Now, if you actually look very carefully at what they do, you'll realize that at some point they use exactly the kind of analytic continuations that I'm referring to, uh, I'm alluding to here. It's sometimes you construct some big charts which cover the complements of co-dimension two thing, and you basically say, I will extend them. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not what we're going to do. We're going to actually kind of, well, because, we're, because I'm doing a statement like this, 
this is not a statement about extent. Yes. So in terms of the Grand Torah, this thing could be viewed as this attaching this and shrinking or whatever. Yes. The similar thing I'll talk about how I think about the geometry of this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, maybe you know, maybe there are many ways of thinking about the geometry. I'll tell you about the way that I find most useful. Okay. okay? So anyway, that's why we care. We right. care. I just want to understand this for a So yes. the so statement is that in this gross Zebra program, yes. they construct from whatever toric <coughs> data a symplectic manifold and the vibrations that these are the models. That's, that's basically right. Okay. So like, but they don't construct a symplectic manifold. But they construct a projective variety, right? And anyway, it doesn't have a... Maybe what I should have said is, when I said here XYZ vibrations, their XYZ vibrations are not really necessarily Lagrangian torus vibrations. Okay. Nonetheless, these are local models. Yes. Are you going to say how the Novikov ring and fields and stuff like that? There is no Novikov rings here. This statement is <coughs> uh, this statement is true integrally. Does that, but does that mean you're evaluating T at equal to one? No. Uh, it has to do with me setting. Yes. This T equal. This oh. th I took. Yes, that's right. Oh, that's okay. This yeah. T. Yeah, yeah because so that, <laughs> if you put a T there, that would. Yeah. Then it would probably be true of the number. But you don't know all that theorem. Uh, no, I think you could. Do, you could. I would have to think. Uh, let me put it like this: I work with the exact Fukai category, which is basically saying that you under, you know, some kind of saying that these things have an integral model. I'm saying something even stronger than saying that I could prove it with T. Yeah. No, but I think. But I think when we see the this example for case source we already put two hundred million fields and yeah, that's the vibrations. But, yeah. but the geometry of the of yeah, the, 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 and the the the, the, the no recovering enters when you do global when you when you think about global questions. Mm -hmm. If you put two of these singularity together or three, that's really will become interesting. Then there'll be interactions between them where T will appear and be very important. But for one of them there basically T does not play anymore. Yeah, so don't, don't think of this as specializing. Think of this as basically saying the answer for all t doesn't depend on t, in, you know, or depend on t in a very stupid way. Um, yeah. If you want to apply to toric degenerations, yes. Uh, yeah, you would have to do patching. I'm not. I'm just saying this is the motivation for studying these examples. I'm not at all saying that this implies mirror symmetry for the quintic threefold. I'm just saying for the local models, that's what it is. Okay. But does that say that the areas of the disks are all injured? It means that they will, yes, yeah, so they will all be. No, it's true. It's, it's not even that. It's not even that they're integers. It's that you know, their their areas of the disks are determined by um, by their boundaries, by the homology classes of their boundaries. Something like that. Exactly. Yeah. That's what exactly it says. It means that you know, th there's no, th there's no. They don't go around some pi two class in the ending space. If you know the boundary conditions, if you have some disk with corners. Then there are some numbers associated with corners that determine the area of the disk. Those are going to be totally they, They're not, I mean, up to some multiple, up to some, multiple, up to some <laughs> normalization. <laughs> you can fudge factors so that everything is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. That's right, that's right. This is what I, I was saying, but it's hard for me to say that all the areas are zero. You can normalize <laughs> all areas are zero. That's really the statement. Thank yeah, sorry, thank you. Dude. Okay? Good. So, how do I think about the geometry of these spaces? Well, this is just the fiber product of this and this over C. Okay. So what we should do is project to C. So project to C. And uh, by either this or this, because they're equal. <coughs> and uh, so what you see is that there's one singularity at 0 that's very obvious. Okay. So this is the origin. And then there is something funny happening actually at 1. Now I'm going to put a square. This is 1. So this is a singularity. I'll, I'll say more. Singular fiber. This fiber at 1 is actually singular at infinity. And up to you know, the sort of things that we're used to in symplectic topology, the way you should think about this space is you should cut it in half. And now this part is has well, this part is Cn Cn right plus one crossed with the fiber of this map. That fiber has a name. It's the Hawkins pair pair of pins. So Hn minus one is equal to the 
locus 1 plus sum y j equals 0 sitting inside c star to be n. Then we point out that if n equals 2, then what we're doing is we're just taking 1 plus y1 plus y2 equals 0. And then this is exactly an actual pair of pentas. In higher dimensions, it's basically a, a gen general linear plane in C star to the end. So this is what this half looks like. Affine plane crossed with this. This other half looks like, well, you now take the fiber of this other guy, which is just C star to the M, crossed with C star to the N. Okay? So we can you can think of this space as being obtained from two pieces, one of which is, well, basically, any whatever. And now all the components, uh, and the, the point is that the general fiber, the general fiber is given by this hn minus 1 cross um, c star to the n. I got really confused about which arrow is pointing where. Okay, so this arrow is pointing to this region. Okay, ah. and this arrow is pointing to this region. And this arrow is pointing to just the fiber, the smooth fiber. Okay? And these are, okay. so now you can tell what these, uh, I can tell you more about these singular fibers. The singular fiber is the coordinate hyperplanes cross hn minus 1. This singular fiber is actually some kind of like hn minus 2 um, cross blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that when I said that this is going to work with Zach Sylvan, so Jack has, uh, Zach has this um, stop removal uh, theory, which basically tells you that if you take some partially wrapped category, and then you can do some operations like putting things together and putting this, gluing things together. So the naive idea, for, for, I mean, there are many, many ways of proving this. It's just somehow the geometry of these spaces looks so explicit. But it seems that the shortest way of proving it, uh, idea of proof, is to basically take <coughs> the left wrist vibration. So, so, so take, um, as I said, C, uh, I'll just write again. C n plus one cross h n minus two mapping to C by the map which is just the product of xi. Okay, and think of it as well, not a left shift fiber, as a landau gisberg model. Okay, and if you think about it as a landau gisberg model, we understand it's the chi category. I mean, it's basically there's some kind of there's just this part which we understand, and then there is this part which is actually mirror to coordinate hyperplanes h n minus one. Did I write h n minus two earlier? No, one. Okay which is just mirror to coordinate hyperplanes, so it gives you mirror symmetry for this landau gisberg model. And we understand mirror symmetry for this fiber, just C starts at the end across this guy, mirror to coordinate hyperplanes, and then the same thing on the other side. Okay. And then you put them together. Okay, so that's in some sense, you know, if you, if you believe the formalism and you kind of do it. The idea is if you can do some basic computations, then you can just put things together. But what I want, uh, and because, because I have that motivation of wanting to understand, wanting this as a building block for mirror symmetry for SYZs, what I want for, for, for SYZ vibration, what I want is like a, an SYZ interpretation of this. I want something like this. I want an object, okay, from Lagrangian. So that when I think about the Fleur theory of that immersed Lagrangian and the space of all brains supported on this Lagrangian, then I recover the mirror space. That's what I want. Not, I, don't, I, don't, you know, it's not an, I don't find it sufficiently satisfactory to just have a computation of the wrapped category. So, so what do we want to do? So, so is, this, is this immersed Lagrangian will be skeleton, yeah? In the sense. No, I will trade. It will be, it will be I homotopy will, equivalent to the space? No, it will not be. So, so the naive thing is that it would be, but that one is too hard to compute with. Let me do that. So, so, so the starting point is indeed some kind of skeleton. So first, already in the fiber, yeah, you would have to put some kind of skeleton for, so the, the fiber is, uh, as I said, HN minus, I'm going to always use this picture of the fiber ratio. HN minus 2 plus C star C. So if I, if I take a, this have HN minus 2. 
one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. N minus two is what happens at this one. So there's a copy N minus two happening here. But no, N minus one. N minus one. Um, okay. So of course here there's an obvious skeleton, which is S1 to the N. Okay. And here, already here, I don't want to take a skeleton because I want to use Fleur theory and I don't want to do DGAs. Okay. So I don't want to do is I want to use instead um, Nick Sheridan's Lagrangian. So what is this? This is an immersed exact S n minus 1. By the way, the numbers record dimensions. So no. n minus 1, this guy's n minus 1 complex dimension, complex dimension. Immersed exact minus 1 constructed by Sheridan. So the case, I'll draw a picture only one case. So if n equals 2, then, as I said, this is the pair of pants. And then this Lagrangian was in fact constructed by Seidel, and it's this guy. So this is not a skeleton. It's some kind of thickening of a skeleton. The way I think about it, and in fact I'll use again the same idea in a few minutes, is that you thicken the obvious symmetric skeleton You thicken it by putting, by doubling it, and then once you double it, you can go around these self-intersections. Okay? And this is the basic idea. So if you do sheaf theory or micro-local stuff, then you're going to have the singularity, or, or DGAs, you have the singularity, and you have some, lots of generators associated with singularities, and some equations, things to solve. Okay? I don't want to do that. I would rather make the Lagrangian a little bit more complicated, and all, that comp uh, and all that structure of the algebra, the micro-local stuff that's happening in that singularity, turns into holomorphic disks that I can count. And in this case, they're all very easy to count. There's this disk, and then there's this disk just like it in the base. Anyway, and so, so, so Sheridan basically proved mirror symmetry for this pair of pants um, using this Lagrangian. And he, for his formulation is not the one that's most convenient for me. His is, form is a formulation in terms of um, matrix factorizations. Here, it's more convenient to have formulations in terms of coherent sheaves. But you use, in this case, you can use Orloff's thing to pass from one to the other. But this is the starting point in the fiber. And in general, instead of being a, so in general, um, this, I'll just mention this, uh, this uh, ln minus 1 has, OK, 1, 2, 3, that's n plus n plus 1 self-intersections. Now, there is a question of grading that's going to arise later. And in this situation, the fact that we have written the equation like this, so this pair of pants, of course, is symmetric. Okay? But the pair of pants is embedded inside c star squared. Okay? And it's inside c star squared, we've written this function. 1 plus y1 plus y2, okay? We've fixed that function. So that means we don't have all the symmetries of c star squared. So it turns out that these two directions are the directions in which y1 goes to 0. And this is y2 goes to 0. And this is y1 and y2 both go to infinity. So the way the Fleur theory will work out for what we want to do is that the grading in this direction and the grading in this direction is different from the grading in this direction. And as an outcome, this intersection point and this intersection point will both have degree 1. So n of them, n have degree 1. And 1 has degree 2. So one self-intersection and intersection point have degree 1, and one of them has degree 2. And you can kind of see it, because roughly speaking, later what's going to happen is I'm going to morally fill in this thing and then there's some holomorphic guy that with boundary on here. Anyway. So questions? So, so this object, does it generate or only split generate? This is not an object. It has it the, supports the, the a family of objects. Object. No, of course they don't split generate because it's like skyscraper sheaves of points on a variety. Okay. So what there is is that there is some big brain that lives on this, something like a, some kind of loop space object, and that object. Well 
That object is very interesting. It doesn't generate. Okay. But it, it gives you a mirror functor that is a fully faithful embedding, even though it doesn't actually generate the category. It's well, like spinning plus. What? Spinning plus. It's like spinning plus. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, but somehow. It depends. You, there's a very there's many different versions of the Fukai category, and but you can formulate mirror symmetry using more than one. But in this case, I really want to think about moduli space of objects. That's what I want to think. It, it, it is somehow easy theorem or difficult theorem that that object somehow uh, gives you fully faithful object. It follows from what Nick did. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm not counting the degrees of the orbits. I'm counting the degrees of these generators that you get out of it. And so, first of all, so, so just, just, just pause for a second. So, mm -hmm. 1 plus 1 equals 2. That's what this triangle says. I'm throwing out the ones that don't. Of course, each self intersection contributes two generators, but I only care about one of them. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay? So, I'm trying to sweep things under the rug. But basically, 1 plus 1 equals 2. That's what we care about. The, the effectiveness of this big object, is it again some reflection of whatever analytic continuation argument you made before? Or is it the effectiveness of this big object is, no, it's not an analytic. It's that this object has the following property. There are some brains on here that, of course, there's many brains supported on this. Okay? Some of them correspond to brains supported on circles that live here. Some of them correspond to brains that circles live here. But there are more. In this case, there aren't. That's Okay, so that's our starting point. And then if we want to do the obvious thing, what we would do is we would take that guy and we would parallel transport it around the circle that goes like this. Oh, this is not a puncture. Okay, remember, this is, zero, this is the origin, singularity. This is one. And what am I transporting? I'm transporting that Lagrangian here. Ln minus one cross Sm, S1 to the m. But then if I do this and I meet this point, I realize that this is a bad singularity. So here, this singularity is a cone. Cone on an m torus. Okay? So again, you, you face the same question that you faced with that guy. You can either very carefully think about some micro-local computations of what is supported in here. So uh, as of whenever I was at A, maybe like March or April, it wasn't clear how to do that computation in the micro-local world. Or you can resolve it. Yes? Okay, fine. <laughs> two of them come to I, I think recently David did it and posted a paper. I think he did the <laughs> other one. <laughs> I'm not. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I thought he did the other one. Um, or you could resolve and count disks. So that's what I'll do. I'll resolve and count disks. So how do I resolve? I take, I double this guy. And I study this Lagrangian instead. So now, so this Lagrangian, so this parallel transport, this. so that's what I meant by telling you. So this is not this is not a skeleton; it lives near a skeleton, and it's basically what happens is that the holomorphic disk that it bound, that it bounds, there are so many of them that anything supported on the skeleton is detected by this Lagrangian, this immersed uh, exact Lagrangian, which I will denote L and N. Um, has the property that the space, and we're putting quotes, of, let me say it like this, of simple objects, uh, simple is not the right word. I really want to say like irreducible, but, um, point-like objects. So 
supported on L and N is exactly is Should be double because before it was something like run one local system in this part. But now there are two copies. How to There's two copies. So what's gonna happen? That's why I had to be careful about this point line. Yeah. So what happens actually? The simple objects yeah. are direct sums of Sum points, of and they're yeah. shifted by one. So you take the adipotent object corresponding to it, and you okay, get the like formal thing. Yeah. That's right. It's formal. Okay. So what I want to do in the re remaining uh, 30 minutes or so is basically kind of explain how you do these computations. Why is, it, why is it that the space of objects supported by this is actually this space? It's quite like a condition. Point like means endomorphisms are like those of a torus. Th this is kind of the right? um, Fleur cohomology of L and N equipped with this, whatever this data that I need, this object called like B, this is kind of. And we should call toroidal object. Toroidal object. Yeah. But it's hard to know, you know, it's like, but it's like a point in it. A yeah, point, uh, coming to a geometry square, but not coming to a torus, yeah? Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Torus object. A uh, commutative point, non-commutative <laughs> torus. <Okay>. Toroid. <laughs> yeah. And everyone can be happy. Um, so, take finding coaching, but I'm explaining it. That this is isomorphic to the cohomology of the torus, and this is one to the n plus n. But of course, you could, you could say much more. This is the statement that I care about, because to me, this is what tells us that this is the correct mirror and built in mirror space. Do, do you learn that LMN detects everything before you learn that it's just the mirror only by no. learning this? No. And you cannot. I mean, um, You cannot because it's not true for like, no. It's, it's only true in very special cases. Like for example, for like T star S3, the zero section doesn't detect every object. That's just the way it is. So, so, there, so th there's like an interplay between what you compute about this and what you compute about the wrap category. You use the wrap category, you know, you go back and forth. It's a fun game. Um, okay, but so, so, but you know, this guy has, so what I want to explain is, you know, for people who are not used to flirt theory, he's like, this guy has some equations. Okay, where are these equations going to come from? Well, the equations are going to come from two sources before I start. So the equations of, of x and n come from curvature equals zero. This is this new zero. Yeah. You have this object that rearranges. You, you put in some kind of, you have some data living on here. A priori doesn't give you an object to the Fukai category, so you must you first set it equal to zero. And then two, this is not as important in these cases. Uh, you also need to, to know that uh, the, the, the homology with respect to this is not is, is whether it's a zero or not. It turns out that in these examples, you know, once it's unobstructed object, either you get this or you get zero. But U1 does not kill. So those are the two equations. Sorry, what you say, equations, the equation, like Yeah, like defining equations. Yeah, that's right. There's that defining equation over there, and I need to find it somewhere in the Fleur theory of this LMN. I need to find those equations somewhere. How am I going to find them? But this is some kind of standard fact. I mean, this to, the, the, to make this precise, What I want to do is I want to find the deformation space of L. So what is L? L is going to be, I'm going to just do slightly more generally. So L will be immersed in back and conjoint, transverse self intersections. find the deformation space to be the direct sum, uh, unlike Maxime, I'm not going to be careful, but cochains versus cohomology. So I'm going to just take H1 of L with coefficients in K star, okay, working over some field, and just basically local system with, with K coefficients. Direct sum 
Um, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a topologist, so I'm gonna just write k to a power, and the power is the number product. I don't think this is a space. Okay, not as a group. It's a space. So. Uh, um, k to the number of self-intersections of degree 1 with positive action. Okay. So maybe it would be beneficial if I try to do some example. But maybe before I do that, uh, I just want to say, so this degree 1 I'm just going to ask you to just put it inside some black box. Somehow I put in some assumptions that ensure that I have a natural way of assigning an integer to every intersection point of the function. This positive action has to do with exactness. So exactness means that I have a function f from L to R, which controls the areas of holomorphic disks in the following sense. If I ever see, for example, uh, self a holomorphic disk like this, or one gone with one corner, then the area of this disk is equal to the difference in values here and here. F of and it's hard to know what to call the two things. P plus minus F of P minus. How do you know if it's positive or negative? I don't know what's, what's what, what is yeah, How do you choose which order it's positive? I haven't said which one is which. But you can you can get it by remembering Stokes for formula. I mean basically. No, no, I, I mean like self intersection positive action. How do you know if it's oh, positive action or okay. negative action? Yes, the easiest way to do that is to think about if you have a holomorphic disk, <laughs> we were just having this discussion outside. If you have a holomorphic disk and it is an output, okay, then what you basically so that determines, by going along the boundary on one side and the other, that determines an ordering of these two branches. Okay? This one comes first, and then this one comes second. Okay? And that's exactly what, when we say there is two generators associated with each intersection, from exactly given by that order. So the one that can be an output of this operation is the one with positive action. You just come clockwise. Yes, I can. <laughs> I, please, don't, please don't check with my papers to see if this is the convention that I always use. No, no, I already use different yeah, ways. One of two ways to order that's that's so But all I'm saying is that the boundary of holomorphic disk yeah. tell, determines why. Oh, yeah. That's all I'm trying to say. Th that's how you, in fact, that's how you use it in Fleur theory. Okay? So, so, so that's, what this, that's, what, that's what this condition is. So in particular, if this is strictly positive, If this guy has strictly positive action, then the ordering in the other direction does not have strictly positive action, which is good for you because it means that it cannot, there cannot be something going there too. Uh, just for a lot, for to to not have people uh, or be more or less confused, I don't know. Uh, this this and this this, they both correspond to the same generator. Okay. The ordering for this holomorphic this more but you cannot do. You cannot glue, that's exactly what. <laughs> and if you had something coming in here, then you would, ha you would have a gluing problem and then things would be more delicate. Okay, so this is a deformation space. And I will give you the deformation space at the very end of the talk. Uh, and similarly, there is an obstruction space. Uh, but also, your object which is formal direct sum, you should solve some question of the square. So, so what I'm going to do is, yes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just find the non-zero object, yeah. and then and then take the uh, take the other ah, yeah, It's yeah. easier to focus on finding the ah, yeah. for explanation. It's easy, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the obstruction space of L is H two of L in coefficient k. Direct sum, the same thing over there, k to the number of degree two self intersections Uh, with positive action. Now, the main point is that under these assumptions, so this was a claim until 15 minutes before the talk when Tobias explained to me how to prove it, uh, the count of uh, 
holomorphic disks, a generic J, find the map. This map is what you should think of as the Mora Cartel map. From the deformation space to the obstruction space. Okay, so I want to make some observations. Some, sorry, some remarks. So there's a question earlier about like Novikov parameters. The point is that if we were not working in the exact setting, I would have to put in some kind of like Q parameter here, T parameter, something to measure area. But in the exact case, this is basically a polynomial. This map is a polynomial. This map is given by the count of also every V in here goes to the sum of all disks that I could possibly find. This is an output where V is around the bound. That sum is not possibly finite. That sum is finite under these assumptions with positivity action. What the piece or the inputs? The output has to have action even higher than them, yeah. and I only have finitely many intersections. Yeah, if you have only finitely many. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, L is Lagrangian, it's not, yeah. OK. So anyway, this sum is fine. Great. So, so that's what we do. So then what we're looking for is we're looking for things, for, for Bs, for classes in H1, and self-intersections with the property that the image under this map is 0. And those are the non-zero objects. And then from that, we'll then figure out those are the unobstructed objects. Okay. So, if B, so this is just now some terminology. If B is non-zero. We say that the pair L comma B is unobstructed. And then once you have it, you can compute the multi group and ask whether it's zero. Okay. Now comes some part which. Yeah, strictly speaking, polynomials it should be lucky because it map from even which one to which two. If if fundamental group is complicated, it will be not really a polynomial. No, no, no. I think it's polynomial because the, the for each one, pro each two, not for intersection points. I mean for homology of L, L. It's pure pure yeah. string topology. Yeah. Then we get some kind of formality. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not. We would like to use grouping uh, on polynomial. Okay, I'll think about that for a yeah, moment. Yeah, okay, so if I did a chain, then it would be polynomial, and maybe you're saying if, rank, yeah, if I do descent. No, no, I could. I think the part which corresponds to the cluster of homology L, automatically is somehow oh, vanishes. Because, yeah. because, because, uh, because it's commutative. Because it's commutative. Ah, commutative. Because it's commutative, yeah, so commutative. everything cancels. Thank you, Kenshin. Yeah. Do you actually have to go back later and compute for homology? Yeah, yeah. So, so you do this to just define this, and then later I will say, like, I use this data to define for homology. I don't want to use the. I don't want. I mean, that language is appropriate in, in certain situations, and in other situations, I don't feel it's appropriate. But would in it be correct? It would be correct. Yeah. Especially in this case where it's actually the right scheme, not the right scheme. But yeah, but I, I think it's not. It doesn't. If you don't need it, might as well not use it. Um, okay. So 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 I want to explain how we compute. So, uh, well, as many as so the idea is to reduce to a trivial case. Okay? So how do we reduce to a trivial case? We reduce to a trivial case by using the fact that this whole situation has a lot of symmetries. Okay? So we have C star, I mean, let me just do S1 to the M, S1 to the uh, M minus 1 acting equivariant acting on um, on CM plus <laughs> M CM plus one with weights well I'm gonna write, write something like one minus one one, 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 one zero zero one minus one 
Okay, basically the diag the, the torus of things which are the sum of the weights is zero. Okay. So that action preserves that function. Okay. And if you look through our construction, it actually preserve our, preserves our Lagrangian. It also preserves maybe Calabiao structures. Yep. That's why, uh, that's, that's yes, preserved. that's right. It preserves the grading. Grading, yeah. So, preserves everything. Well, preserves uh, L and N, that's the most important thing, and on the other way. So, but now th there's actually more. You can, there's another projection. So, if you can project now to, to the CM variable, so project. X and to the C to C by like X of M, the last coordinate. And this uh, if you pick one of these tori, like you pick one of these circles, this is equivariant with respect to action on C. Good. So now the way to think about this basically is this map has only one singular fiber. There's one singular fiber of this new map projecting to XM. We're going to call it as a triangle. And if you take and the, f and the fiber of this map at 1 is the lower dimensional one. Because I just set XM equals 1. Not only that, if I look at the, the fiber at one another with the inclusion, so, so that, and my Lagrangian LMN, it projects to the circle. <coughs> you can make it project to the circle. Uh, and the intersection with this fiber is LM minus 1, intersects fiber at LM minus 1. Comma. So this is good. So I remember, I'm not, you're not doing the landau gisberg theory of that map. I'm not doing the landau gisberg theory of anything. I'm using these maps just to construct <coughs> Lagrangians and to understand holomorphic curves. But if I have a situation like this, what I can do is I can analyze, well, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to analyze holomorphic disks with boundary on that L, or polygons or whatever. But if I have a situation like this, I can analyze them in two parts. Projection to the thing, the lifts of disks in the base, and things that live in the fiber. Of course, there could be lifts of multiply covered things so to exclude those guys, but that's actually not very hard here for degree arguments. Um, so, so analyze disks in base or lifts of disks. There is not much there. In base plus um, disks in the fiber. So this is the interesting part, disks and the fiber. So that's the inductive step. So you keep going. You reduce x by x. You have fewer and fewer x coordinates until you have one. So the, the base case of the induction is m equals 0. What is m equals 0? It's the thing that lives inside c cross c star to the n plus 1 to the n, c star to the n, given by, I'm sorry, this is ridiculous. Um, given by the equation x0 equals 1 plus the sum of yi, yj. Okay? It's completely ridiculous because this variable is not playing any role at all. It's just c star to the n. But now the Lagrangian that I have in c star to the n is very interesting. Let me draw it again. I have this funny point, which is the part which is 1, this is the point 1. And I have this point, which is 0. And now again, I'm drawing this Lagrangian. Oops, I did it wrong this time. It's OK. I'm making fun. Um, OK, what's wrong with this picture? Okay. This point is not a singular point anymore. Okay. There's no, this is just C start to the end. This was the single, single critical point of the projection from the axis. This is actually a smooth point. There's nothing there. So from the point of view of a symplectic topologist, this is very disconcerting. 
So, because if I take this inverse Lagrangian, <laughs> I can just open it up, and it's nothing. But the point is, the way we define this deformation space takes into account these intersections. Okay? So even though this Lagrangian is isotopic via immersed Lagrangians, because the interest is a seeker's support, it's not object itself yet. That's right. So anyway, even though you can move it away, well, but you know, but nonetheless we have Hamiltonian invariance in symplectic topology. Yeah, but mm, not well, trajectory. Yeah, yeah, so this is the point. Okay. Yeah. So the point is exactly has to do with what bounding co-chains do you put on your Lagrangian. If I took this immersed Lagrangian and only ever equipped it with local systems, then I wouldn't see this, then I would be able to do this. But if instead, but since I put in some things that come from, uh, some defor deformation classes that come from self-intersections, uh, then you see something not true. So let me not compute. So let me just now tell you what happens. So the point is that this generator and this generator, they have degree one. Well, what does it mean they have degree one? It means that if you use them as inputs, so let, let me just call the generators um, z and x is zero. Yes, z and x is zero. Uh, so, what is it? so it means that if you use them as inputs, sorry, I just want to make sure that I'm saying the right thing. I'm saying the right thing. Uh, if you use them as inputs, this contributes to uh, mu2 of the variable z. Okay. So that's mu2. And then there is also uh, something even smaller, something like that. There's also this guy. And this contributes to mu zero. So if you want, so this equation was, you take b and you take the sum over all possible things. So roughly speaking, what you end up with is you end up setting z times x zero equals plus one equals zero. This is just in the case where not all, so this is n equals zero and n equals one. So if n equals one. So the, the curvature, so th this is the equation for curvature. For this more Cartan equation. So the Monte Carton equation basically says you add up this term and you add up this term. And those are the only two things that contribute, and you can just count that there's nothing else. Now you might tell me, oh, there, there's something else on the other side. Okay. But, um, uh, okay. well, anyway. Uh, there's a reason why you have to use the other local system. Um, so, so, okay, so, any of you that's the Monte Carton equation. But in, in general, the, there's something non trivial in the fiber. So let me explain what's happening in the fiber. in the base, same <coughs> picture in the base, but we also have, um, and we have this in the file. Okay? So this, this were, again, we take that same picture that I drew over there, and you parallel transport it. Now, you're probably wondering why did I not write, why did I not call this variable x1 and why did I call it z? It's because really x1 lives here. Remember I told you there is this asymmetry, that, that this one is not like these two? So these two generators are called x1 and x2. Okay. So let me call this generator here beta. So if you look at, and let me, sorry, I didn't do this earlier. Yes. 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 This one, it's a cylinder. These two, yes, these two punctures have come. These two punctures have come together. Yeah, and this is the one that remains. Um, 
So, so now here's what's so so okay. So remember, what equation are we looking for? Actually, I didn't maybe even say this. Oh, well, let's just see it at the end. Uh, so in this case, the curvature mu zero looks something like this. So there's clearly this x1 times x2 equals beta. Actually, something here. Um, so this is x1 <coughs> x2 times beta. But there is some guy that I ignored earlier who lives uh, who lives here. Sorry, I'm going to draw it now. Um, no? I'm going to draw some, some person, so I'm going to draw this. <coughs> this guy. And there's a, there's a parallel guy. So this thing, this has a z in here. It doesn't have any boundary anywhere else. So it looks like it is the identity. But actually, uh, no, this is not, I'm sorry, this is not what I meant to do. I'm sorry, that's not what I meant to do. This guy is actually z. This is what it is. Um, so there is a count of disks over this, which gives you a one plus this. I think I got my getting my pictures wrong. I'm sorry. Um, good. This is my. Uh, and then there's still that guy over there. 1 plus z, there it is. 1 plus z times x0 times r. So this, if this is to vanish, then I need uh, these to be equal. And then once I do that, this equation becomes 1 plus x1, x0, x1, x2 equals 0, which is the equation. <coughs> So, so the claim is that the interaction of the discount and the fiber, in some sense, and the discount and the base, give rise to two things. Um, and then together, once you put it, once you solve both of them, so this is not as pretty as what Maxime is saying. There's two equations, and then you reduce them, and then you end up with one equation. Um, and then that's that what you want. So if you, you can then, you, if you have a good enough control of this uh, Lagrangian, uh, Lagrangian that Sheridan constructed, uh, you end up you end up with the mirror and higher dimensions. Anyway, I think I have one minute left, so I'll stop.